There you go. Okay. Um, so I am Katie Fleming. I'm the Community Engagement Director at Friends. And um, if you're not familiar with Friends, which looking at the list, I think most of you are, but if you're not, we're a nonprofit organization based in the San Juan Islands. Our main office is in Friday Harbor. And our mission is to protect and restore the San Juan Islands in the Salish, Salish Sea for people and nature. Um, you know, our, the, the, with our vision is like, you know, toward looking at our th thriving communities and natural shorelines and healthy seas. And certainly what we're talking about today, you know, fits um, all of those categories. Um, but what I'll do is I'll put a link to our website in the chat, as well as our latest e newsletter. So if you don't know about us and you want to learn more, um, you can follow those links later. Um, but two events that are happening right now are ORCA Action Month and the um, Stop Ensuring Trans Mountain Week of Action. So this um, is obviously, those are very connected issues, and I'm sure all of you know that. And so having said that, I'm excited that you're here tonight, just like Brent said, that you are taking steps to engage. And some of you, I know your names, and I, you are amazing and um, I can't thank you enough for all that you're engaged in right now. And this will just be one more of those things. But um, I wanna go ahead and introduce you to Lovell Pratt, our Marine Protection and Policy Director. Um, she, um, again, if you don't know her, some of you do, but if you don't, she is a wealth of knowledge about maritime shipping and oil spill prevention. And boy, does she know how to write a comment letter. Um, I am curious, Lovell, how many comment letters you've written so far this year. <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you, Katie, and, and thank you, Brent. Uh, yeah, a lot. Like, I don't even want to try to count. <laughs> even one today, right? Already yeah, today. got one today in by the 4 p.m. deadline, and I'm trying to get my brain out of that comment letter and no, you're here good. on the Trans Mountain Pipeline project. Thanks. All right, Level, take it away. All right. Well, um, thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate you taking time on this beautiful day to, to come on Zoom and and probably a lot of you know all about the, what I'm gonna tell you, but um, I will um, provide you with just um, a brief background information and um, talk about the action alert that, that, um, that we've got going right now. And then I wanna leave time for you to ask questions and, and if there's any way that I can help you engage with the insurance industry and take action, I'm really happy to do that. So, so um, you for one second, I, did, I didn't mention about the questions. I'd like people to use the question and answer function, the little, see so the little boxes, if you're not familiar, down on the bottom of your screen, the little chat boxes. Oh, not the little chat boxes, but the little question, you know, whatever that dialogue box. Please use that instead of the chat function to ask level questions, and then I'll moderate that in a little bit. Okay, go for it, level. All right. Thanks, Katie. So as you all probably know, the Trans Mountain Pipeline is um, in Canada and it transports Alberta tar sands crude oil from Alberta to Burnaby, British Columbia, where it gets loaded onto tankers and uh, transported to destinations in the US and Asia through uh, Georgia Strait, Boundary Pass, Harrow Strait and the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And um, the Friends of the San Juans has been engaged in the permitting process for the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion going back to, I think, uh, 2014 or maybe even earlier. Um, the project has been improve, approved and it's under construction. It's about 20% uh, of the construction is completed. And um, one thing that Canada requires of the pipeline in order to operate is to um, have insurance coverage. And so because the project has been approved, one of the only ways we can engage and oppose the project is to reach out to insurance companies and urge them to either discontinue the insurance coverage they're currently providing, and also to urge um, insurance companies to not provide new coverage uh, for the pipeline. And, um, you know, why does this matter to us? You know, really it's, it's mostly the vessel traffic that we're really concerned about. Um, the pipeline expansion would add an additional 696 tanker transits through our waters each year. And even if there, you know, we're, you know, additional vessel traffic increases the risk of accidents and oil spills. And that's a tremendous concern. And even if there, you know, the vessels operate safely and there are no accidents or oil spills, just the noise from the ships and the presence of the ships significantly impact the Southern resident killer whales. And as Katie said, this is Orca Action Month and 
Friends of the San Juans, we were one of the organizations that petitioned the federal government to list the Southern resident killer whales as endangered species. And that was back in 2011. And ever since that time, we've been really focusing a lot of our efforts on their protection and recovery. Um, so anyways, these, these tankers, um, the noise from the tankers impacts the Southern resident killer whales ability to communicate and to echolocate, to hunt for um, the preferred prey, the Chinook salmon. And the presence of the ships impacts um, their foraging. And, and so it's a very um, significant concern. And then um, we're very concerned about ship strikes um, because the ship strikes can, can kill the Southern resident killer whales and there's documentation of that. Um, you know, before I um, get into uh, uh, more information about insurance, reaching out to the insurance companies and taking action. There's a few studies I'm just going to ask Katie to post in the chat, and I just want to make sure you're aware of them. Um, the first is um, Katie's going to post a link to a 2019 study that San Juan County contracted for um, the San Juan County oil spill risk consequences assessment. And one of the things in that assessment, um, it analyzed uh, the costs of a 4 million gallon diluted bitumen spill at turn point. And this um, analysis was based on a spill scenario that was included in the application for the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion. And, uh, and the study determined that the damages would be from 142 million to 510 million just in San Juan County. So not included, I mean, the oil of course would go, would um, come ashore on other counties and in Canada, but just looking at damages in San Juan County, that was what they came up with. And it's important to know that, that the, the damages they assess don't include known oil spill impacts such as marine transportation, human health, social services, science and education and tribal treaty rights. And, and also it doesn't include the cost of the oil spill response itself or the assessment for natural resource damages and, um, and the restorations of natural resources. So um, I just wanted to be sure you're all aware of that study. Um, and then we've had two recent science reports that I wanna be sure you're aware of. Um, this first one um, addresses the issue of of vessel strikes and their impacts to the Southern resident killer whales. So there's a link to the study and also a CBC news article that Katie's just posted in the chat um, if you're interested. Um, and I'll just read just one quote from this study. Um, Identification of vessel strike related trauma demonstrates that human interaction is a significant cause of morbidity and mortality in killer whales. These findings suggest that vessel strikes may be an important threat, particularly in the endangered Southern resident killer whale population that frequents areas near large human populations and shipping lanes. Um, and then the final study that just came out this year from NOAA, um, this is the study that evaluated the impacts of vessel presence um, on the whales. And one of the disturbing findings was that there's a significant impact, especially with the female orcas. And this is very concerning because of course, you know, we want this population to recover. We want the population numbers to increase. And to do that, we need um, the female orcas to be well-fed while they're pregnant and well-fed while they're nursing calves. And so um, this information about how vessel presence has a particular, um, is particularly impactful to the female orcas is very concerning. Um, so there's a link to that study and also a, a great article that Linda Mapes did in the Seattle Times. Um, so that kind of um, is just some background information about why we're really concerned about the Trans Mountain Pipeline and its associated tanker traffic um, <clears throat> transporting the, the um, diluted bitumen, the, the Alberta tar sands crude oil through our waters here. Um, and, um, and so this action alert is, is really about um, reaching out to the insurance companies and asking them to take action um, and by not providing coverage for the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Um, and when you go to the action alert, if there's only one action you take, I'd ask that you uh, reach out to our Washington State Insurance Commissioner 
And um, before, you know, um, earlier this year, unrelated to the Trans Mountain Pipeline project, uh, the insurance commissioner reached out to the insurance industry operating here in Washington state and urged them to work with tribes and adopt policies of consent on projects that would impact tribes. And um, so this is an opportunity to reach out and say thank you for, for doing this outreach on behalf of tribes and urging insurance companies to have policies that would ensure that they have the free and prior and informed consent from tribes um, with regard to projects that they might provide coverage for. Um, but, and also to ask our insurance commissioner to understand that, that there are tribes here in Washington state who have opposed the Trans Mountain Pipeline project and whose tribal treaty rights would be impacted by the vessel traffic associated with that project and, um, and to reach out to, our, um, to the insurance industry here in the state um, in regard to the Trans Mountain Pipeline project, asking them to not provide coverage for those reasons. Um, so, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to ask Katie, um, we have a new tool and, uh, Katie, I don't know if you want to tell us about it, but I'm going to ask Katie to share her screen and we'll just kind of walk through the process of if you, if you want a, an easy way to send a, um, communication to all the CEOs of all the insurance companies is, is through this link, um, Katie's going to pull up on the screen there and show us how we get to that. There it is. Yeah, so 63 people have sent letters in, which is awesome. And one thing, um, so Katie was going to go ahead and fill this out. And I was just going to give you just a couple of tips um, of simple things that you can do to personalize your message. Um, you know, when, when companies get form letters that are all identical, they um, they may you know just lump that all in as one comment and not recognize them as multiple comments. So by making small changes um, to the comment letter, then um, we'll let Katie fill in her yeah, and I just put information the, here. I just put the link to the. Um, to this tool in the chat and then also to our website too that has the the information about contacting Mike Creedler as well. Oh thank you Katie. Yeah. yeah. All right. And I think do they make you do this? We'll do this. Um, I should have had this up here and then it'll take us to where we need to go next. Um, and here we go. Okay, and so that's the important part now, start writing. And this is where we can start to customize what we're up to. But you can see there's all sorts of people. This is a different one, right? Where some of them will just be like, it'll just be like your state senator. But in this case, we had a lot to, to write here, to write to. Okay, so here's the important part. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the easiest things you can do is just to make a small change to the subject line. So where it says your letter subject, to just make it a unique message when it's received by um, the insurance company. So um, yeah. And mm -hmm. so Katie's just gonna put in some of her own wording there just to modify that subject line. Okay, and I might even just, you know, I don't know, what do you think? Can I take all that out level? Yeah. All right, there we I, go. It, whatever, whatever, you know, I, th I think when you're sending a, a comment it, whatever speaks to your heart and whatever you think is most important, go with that. Um, and so, and so then, um, you know, Katie's going to talk about where she lives here up in the first line. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of the most important things is down at the bottom um, to sign your name, because <laughs> it's just at this, in the form letter, um, there isn't a um, generic um, signature, but you can include your name there and whatever. If you want to include contact information, you can. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we've provided you with some um, recent scientific studies. And if those um, are meaningful to you to include, you could include that. And just pretend. Um, so it's really just about, you know, making a few changes um, 
in the subject line, the first thing they see when they receive it, that that makes a big difference. And, and then, yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. You click send. And of course, you can just click send without making any changes at all. But mm -hmm. um, it's great if you can make those changes. Mm -hmm. um, share here too. Like I saw someone just recently shared it on Facebook um, that I saw. And so you get, it's a really easy thing to do. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Katie. And I'll share it after I give this back to you here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I've been making phone calls and um, Katie, actually, could you pull up the list, um, the link to the list of all the contact information? So in the action alert, you have, there's a list that lists the email addresses and the phone calls for key people in the various insurance companies. And, um, and I've been making phone calls and I found that um, I've made a number of calls where I get a voice message that says their mailbox is full. And I figure, well, that's a good sign. <laughs> They've gotten a lot of calls. Um, um, but if you do call um, the CEO's phone numbers, typically they have secretaries that will answer the phone. These are lovely people. And I've had great conversations with um, several folks that way. Um, so, and then also um, typically they have a customer service line that you can speak to a real person at. Um, so we provided all these phone numbers. If you're feeling um, like you're up for a phone call, that's great. And then we also have the email addresses listed individually in case you're more comfortable, you know, sending a personalized email that way um, instead of using the form um, that we've provided. So hopefully we've got tools there that you can use to, to do outreach. And, and then of course, um, like Katie said, um, reaching out to family and friends and just um, passing on the action alert to those who you think can um, to take action as well, that would be great. Um, and I think at this point, you know, if anyone has any questions or, um, or if anyone has, has done some outreach and they've gotten some results that they want to share, um, you could put those in the chat or in the uh, Q&A um, mm -hmm. there too. That would be great. And, but I think you're all like totally seasoned commenters and, <laughs> and folks who are probably, you've probably already done everything. So, and that's great. And I thank you so much for taking action. Here we go. So from Sean Level, have the First Nations run out of legal options to stop this pipeline? You know, as far as I know, I'm not aware of any actions that are active at this time, but that's a really good question. I should research that. Um, so this would be up in Canada, uh, but I will find out and I'll get back to you. And if anybody else wants that, question answered, um, I can send it to all of you. We got another one. And have the First Nations joined in the insurance company campaign? Um, Slay the Tooth is very active in this campaign. Um, the First Nations uh, tribe up in um, uh, Burnaby and British Columbia. Yes, and um, and some of the other First Nations. Um, I haven't seen um, tribes here in the U.S. actively engaged in this insurance campaign, but definitely Slayla Tooth is there. The leaders um, uh, at Slayla Tooth are providing a lot of leadership on this campaign for sure. And level two, you, I, I don't think you mentioned how, what's, what's going on internationally with this right now. Oh my gosh. But yes. Like, thank so you, Katie. Here, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I am just so heartened. Um, so uh, there are um, actions taking place all over the world and um, like there's, there's one action, a group of moms in London is hand delivering a giant Father's Day card to the CEO of Lloyd's, urging him to not provide insurance for the Trans Mountain Pipeline. And it's just so heartening to see these actions taking place all over the world. 
you know, on behalf of a project that's right here in our backyard. Um, so this is a, this is a campaign that's 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 um, really gained a lot of momentum in many cities all over the world, and it's very heartening to see all the work that's taking place that way. Yeah. Right. Well, any any last questions before we sign off and go enjoy the sunshine? <laughs> yeah, you you all have got this. I know you do. <laughs> and you, um, Katie, why don't you um, could you post my email in the chat, and then I'm happy to follow up if anyone has any questions afterwards. Um, you're always welcome to reach out. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and then and then you know Janet says the transplant expansion has had a poor safety record already. Yes. which is something else to mention in these comments, right? Right. Like it's yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is very concerning. Um, that's very true. Yes. Yeah, and they have to shut. She says they have to shut down because of this. So yeah, it's it's definitely it's not a good project. No. <laughs> no, levels. and I you know and I I don't know that I said it at the beginning, but mining the tar sands uh, to derive the tar sands crude oil takes a lot of energy. So this product has a lot of greenhouse gas emissions, unlike a lot of other crude oils. And um, so it's the worst of the worst in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. And, and that's also why this project is so concerning is, is just that um, it's just adding to, you know, the, um, the greenhouse gas emissions coming from Canada, coming from the Alberta tar sand projects. And it's so unfortunate that they're just increasing uh, the production of the Alberta tar sands crude. Which is why it's such an important national effort, international effort, right? Yeah, like people absolutely. That's what people recognize. You know, we have to transition away from these fossil fuels and, um, and expanding a project like this is the wrong direction, totally the wrong direction for what we need to address climate change issues right now. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and we got another question. Have there been recent analyses of potential markets in Asia? Um, not any recent ones that I'm aware of. I actually was surprised that um, you know, through COVID, there were some industries that slowed down, but in fact, um, there was continued strong shipments of tar sands crude oil during um, all through COVID. And um, but I, there's an economist in Canada, Robin Allen, whose work I just am so appreciative of. She's just so um, she's such a good researcher and she's such a good analyst, and she comes out with. Um, you know, great information and updates on a regular basis about this project and why, you know, it's, it's a terrible project. And, you know, Canada had bought this project from Kinder Morgan. So the Canadian taxpayers own it and are paying for it. And it is, um, it's a bad investment. <laughs> and, and she does a good job documenting that. Um, so Robin Allen, um, and I don't know if we can, um, but if I, uh, I'll follow up, if I find any recent articles of hers that, that does analysis about the potential markets, I will pass that on to you all. Yeah, and that was Janet who asked that too. So you could pass Okay, yeah. yeah. We got another one. And from Sean, will this campaign extend beyond Orca Action Week and month? Well, so the reason why we're, we're, um, we've scheduled this campaign right now is because right now Trans Mountain is shopping for their insurance coverage for the coming year. So their policies switch over on September 1st. Uh, they have an annual policy, their annual policies typically end the end of August and then, they, and then a new policy is implemented in, in September. So their broker is out shopping right now. So that's why we're targeting this time period to reach out to insurance companies um, because they're asked to either renew their current, um, their existing coverage or they're being asked to provide new coverage. So that's why the timing of this action week is right now. Um, but that said, I, you know, this is something that has been going on for years and we've had success um, 
convincing some insurance companies to publicly state that they will not provide coverage. And they've gotten a lot of public support for that. And hopefully other companies will join them. Um, but this is an ongoing effort, I would say. So don't, you know, if you don't get to, um, you know, doing an action, taking action this week, it's not too late to do it next week or, you know, anytime, really. So thank you. Good question. Does the insurance cover construction only or shipping? That's a good so question. So this would be um, insurance for the pipeline itself. So um, the, um, the actual shipping of the product is um, the insurance coverage for that is separate. Yeah. And the shippers are required to have a certain level of insurance, but certainly not enough to cover what is realistically going to be the cost of a major spill. Okay. okay. Is that every everything? And again, we just put levels, you know, um, email in the chat, my emails in the chat, and you can certainly, again, most of you know who we are anyway, and um, can get in touch with us very easily. Um, so let us know. Um, yeah, and I am also curious too. Yeah, well, um, I'm assuming, I don't, can you all raise your hands? Have any of you have used the letter writing tool yet? Have you used it yet? I and mean, you could put it in the chat, but, and again, you all know, you all know us. And so I would love feedback on that because, oh good, because it's the first one, the first time we've done this. And um, we just wanted to make it easier for people instead of copying and pasting email addresses and doing all that. So I would love your feedback on how that worked too. Great. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. Really appreciate it. And thank you for all your good work. Yep. Thank you. And yep, we'll hopefully see you soon. And happy almost summer. Sure if you don't <laughs> like it out there. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks, Lovell. Thanks, Katie. <laughs>